In this video, we examine how liquid water can form and remain within hydrophilic porous materials when the air humidity is below 100%. The process allowing this is referred to as capillary condensation. A hydrophilic material is one whose solid vapor surface energy is higher than that of the solid liquid interface formed when water adsorbs on it, so the energy of the system is reduced when water adsorbs. You have certainly witnessed the normal process of condensation that can often be seen on cold surfaces, in particular windows or bathroom mirrors. To quantify this, recall that relative humidity, denoted RH, is the ratio between the partial pressure of water in air, P, and the vapor pressure at saturation, P0, which is equivalent to the mass ratio of water vapor present in air, M, to the maximum amount at saturation, M0. Relative humidity is usually reported as a percentage, which would require multiplying the above equations by 100. Both P0 and M0 increase exponentially with temperature. For example, M0 is about 31 grams per cubic meter at 30 degrees Celsius, while it is only 11 grams per cubic meter at 10 degrees Celsius. So, if saturated air at 30 degrees Celsius is cooled to 10 degrees Celsius, it will have a relative humidity of about 300%, which is thermodynamically not allowed, so condensation takes place. This removes the water in excess of 100% relative humidity, in our example, 20 grams per cubic meter, and brings the air back down to saturation at the prevailing temperature. While it is thermodynamically favored, condensation is often kinetically limited, but is assisted by the presence of hydrophilic surfaces. For example, dust particles greatly facilitate the formation of water droplets, or clouds in the sky. Condensation of water can occur in a hydrophilic capillary even when the relative humidity is below 100%. Let us consider a dry and empty hydrophilic capillary with a radius r and a height h. It has one end open and the other rounded and closed. Our example will consider a 10 nanometer radius and a length 10 times that. As humidity increases, water molecules adsorb on the inner surface of this capillary, eventually forming a liquid film of growing thickness delta. In our example, this remains a small fraction of the total pore volume, rising to 15 to 20 percent at a relative humidity of about 90 percent. This corresponds to a critical relative humidity, RH, crit, closed, at which it becomes thermodynamically favorable for water to condense in this pore. Condensation begins at the bottom of our tube and gradually fills the pore as more moisture is made available. In this process, the relative humidity remains locally constant within the pore and equal to RH crit closed. The humidity can only increase once the meniscus has reached the open end of the pore. At higher relative humidity, the curvature of the liquid vapor interface flattens, but only leads to a minor increase of the filled pore volume. The humidity at which capillary condensation takes place depends on the pore size and can be obtained from the Kelvin-Laplace equation. This states that the natural log of relative humidity is equal to the molar volume of the liquid, divided by RT, multiplied by the curvature of the liquid vapor interface, kappa LV, and the surface tension, gamma LV. The curvature at any point on an interface is given by the sum of the inverse of the radii of two tangent circles taken in perpendicular planes. When the center of the tangent circle is outside the phase considered, it is taken to be negative. For example, if we consider a spherical meniscus of a wetting fluid in a cylindrical pore, then both radii are equal and negative. In that case, 
the curvature is kappa LV equals minus 2 over RLV. Considering such a spherical curvature for Kelvin's equation, ln RH equals VL over RT times kappa LV gamma LV. Thereby, we find that for a spherical interface of radius RLV, ln RH becomes minus 2 VL gamma LV over RT times 1 over RLV. This shows that when the relative humidity is 100%, the term ln RH is zero, so RLV is infinite, and the liquid vapor interface is flat. Let us now go back to our round-ended capillary with a film of adsorbed water with thickness delta. The point at which capillary condensation takes place is obtained from our previous equation when RLV equals R minus delta. Since delta is on the order of one nanometer, it is usually justifiable to neglect it, but we will include it in our equations for completeness. The humidity at which capillary condensation begins at the bottom of our tube can therefore be obtained from the expression giving the natural log of RH crit closed as minus VL over RT times 2 gamma LV over R minus delta. In an open tube, condensation creates an adsorbed film with a curvature kappa LV equals 1 over R minus delta. So the tube fills at a higher critical relative humidity defined by minus VL over RT times gamma LV over R minus delta. This is similar to our previous equation, but does not include the factor 2. For our example, this would raise the critical humidity from about 90 to 95%. Condensation will occur when the humidity reaches RH crit open, resulting in a droplet with menisci having a curvature 2 over R minus delta just as in the case of the close-ended tube. That droplet would be in equilibrium with RH crit closed, which is lower than RH crit open, so the existing relative humidity is supersaturated with respect to the droplet, and the tube fills spontaneously. Capillary condensation happens at lower relative humidity in pores of smaller radii, so that in a material with a pore size distribution, increasingly coarse pores get filled as the relative humidity increases. In this illustration, using an artificial network with two sizes of pores, R small and R large, condensation occurs first in the small pores when LNRH equals minus VL over RT, gamma LV over R small, minus delta. As more humidity enters the pores network, it condenses in the smaller pores until their menisci reach their ends. Beyond this point, additional humidity will cause RH to increase in the porous materials so that the menisci in the small pores will flatten until the radius of the liquid vapor meniscus reaches RLV equals R large minus delta. After this, additional humidity condenses in the larger pores, causing them to fill progressively. After being filled, RH can increase again, and the menisci of these pores will be flat when RH equals 1. In conclusion, water can condense in capillaries of hydrophilic materials at relative humidity below 100%. The humidity at which this happens depends on the pore size, which implies that materials with a pore size distribution gradually fill their pores with water until full saturation is reached. The condensed liquid has a radius of curvature, which implies a negative pressure in the liquid. This has important implications for drying, as discussed in our next video.